Hello everyone, this is Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com and before I get into my coding project today, I want to show you a little bit of code cleanup on my website. And now's the time to do it while the site is still only one page. As I externalize code and clean it up, it's going to be my copy and paste template forever forward, so i got to live with a lot of the decisions I make right now or else have a lot of tedious updating work in the future. So, it will also be a great opportunity to do a Vim tutorial editing multiple files at once the easy way. We will vim index.html and uh, as you can see we're already using some include file tricks here for header and footer and tracking and so I'll be using that same technique to externalize everything that is not going to change from page to page. So as I was looking over my code, I did notice that I have an open div here, and then I have uh, some content, some content, a paragraph, and then I have a closed div, and I don't have a second closed div to match with uh, the container element at the top. So first order of business is just fixing my uh, HTML for purity's sake. And I'll get the same indenting, although I'll probably clean up indenting my own way later on. I do a save. Now that my code is good as a starting point, I am going to look at the top of the file and find those things that are the same everywhere. I do see another sort of mistake I need to fix. This meta character set instruction has to do with page rendering and that should be encountered before anything else. And I've been sort of over cautious, I think, putting scripts in the head tag before page draw begins. It seems the common wisdom these days is to move this stuff down to before the end body. So I'll just do that. There's the end body. I'll paste that in there. Even jQuery. Uh, if I don't like it, I can always change it later, especially now that this stuff is going into uh, externalized files. By the way, once you're not in insert mode, GG, double lowercase g, is jumped to the top of the page. A much heavier uppercase g is jumped to the bottom. So starting from the top of the page, I hit Shift V to start highlighting lines at a time. I arrow key down to the first thing that's going to be changing from page to page, the title. And then of course beneath that the meta. So I can copy things into specific buffers, but I'm going to save that for a later tutorial because I don't want to introduce too much Vim stuff at once. D will delete, but put it in your copy buffer. Y will yank it into your copy buffer, but not delete. So we want to actually delete. It's sitting in my copy buffer. Now I want to arrow key to the very beginning, do I for insert, hit return key once, arrow key back up, left pointy bracket, percent side, sign, include, and uh, file, I'll say open page.txt, close quote, and tag. And before I save, here is the Vim thing. This is much easier than all these control keys for editing things in different buffers. This is the tab interface since Vim 7. We hit escape to get out of insert mode. We hit colon to get into the single line EX command mode. We say tab E for making a new tab with a new text file. We say open page.txt, return, p for paste, escape, colon, w for write, and I'll also quit, and then I'll write over here, and we'll have a moment of truth. I'll go over to the browser, do a refresh, see if everything broke. Hey, nothing broke. Let's view source, and look, all that stuff is still actually there. There's an extra line at the top I'm not happy about, but I'll, I can fix that. Um, so let's move on. 
I am going to stay symmetrical in my mind. So we have an open page. I'm going to jump right down to close page. Shift G, boom, close page. This is going to be an interesting issue. I am going to nest include files because at the moment I am too lazy. Oh, a floating eye. Get rid of that. When you're using Vim, you're going to type I accidentally by trying to get into insert mode when you're already insert mode. So just get used to it and delete your floating eyes. Yeah, everyone who wants to jump on Vim is being archaic and why would you use it? Well, that's yet another more fodder for you guys. Okay, so shift V, up, up, and we're gonna do nested include files. You might think, oh, that's bad for rendering speed. Well, don't forget, this is Pygreen. It's gonna render everything out as static HTML. So there's no performance hit even for nesting include files if it works. So we'll have a moment of truth to look at. And I wanna go up, up, up. Now here's an interesting thing. Do I take both divs or just one? Well, the container div is the only one that's the outer element of the skeleton framework. The inner div belongs to that one that's stating 16 columns, which sounds like a very page by page sort of decision to me. So I'm gonna go up to the closing div that matches with that container uh, classed element. D for delete, O for insert a line and to go into insert mode, open pointy bracket, percent, include, and what did I say, open page, so this will be file equals close page, dot txt, close quote, close tag, not saving yet, escape, colon, tab E, space, close page, dot txt, paste, escape, colon, write, and quit, why not? Close that tab. Now I can write. And this is a pretty big moment of truth here because that took out the tracking code include file. So if I do a refresh on here, there's the floating eye that will disappear. I do a refresh, I do a, a view page source, and we will confirm for ourselves that yes, indeed, nested include files work. There's our tracking code. Wow, that was easy. I love it when a plan comes together. So let's just visually review this. And let me take a step that probably people are dying for. I'm only using uh, 80 columns by 24 rows out of convention to look like a normal terminal, but most people aren't going to do that. They're going to use much smaller type on their screen. I'll go small enough to still be readable in these videos. And then I'll just open it out big. Let's see if we can't get a whole page to show at once. And I can see already we have one more include file uh, to do because there's a lot of stuff in there that is not going to be uh, changing from page to page. So first I'll move that tab in and uh, Escape, Shift V. I'll even go up one more space. Shift V. Dun, 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 dun. This is all skeleton CSS framework stuff. Down to even that script reference. Body begins. How interesting. So the top of the page has to be broken into two include files because the title and meta description need to change on a page-by-page -page basis down to the header. Yes, indeed. And the container can go bye-bye here because the container went bye-bye at the bottom. D for delete. It's got to go above the header. O. pointy bracket, percent, include. Now, this is an interesting thing because we have this naming convention going on that makes very much sense with a header and a footer. Now I can actually arrow key to show the whole page. We have open page, close page. This has a very different identity. This is the close head stuff and the open body stuff. 
So let's be as literal as I as we can be. File equals close head, open body. That's too verbose. Let's say head body dot txt. I'll always know what that is when I look at it. Close tag. Now, before I save, escape, colon, tab, E, headbody.txt, right? Return, paste, escape, colon, right, quit, colon, right, another moment of truth. Refresh. Hey, nothing's broken. View page source. And there's all that stuff when it goes back to the standard skeleton files. So, mission accomplished. All we have to do now is, uh, let's see, there's, there's indent stuff. I'm not going to bother you with indent. That would make too long of a tutorial. Quit. We made so many files. We're going to do, we're going to do, it's not vim, it's git. We're going to do git uh, uh, status. Let's see what's going on in there. Modified, uh, untracked, untracked, untracked. These are all good things. Git add star. Everything is added that got out of sync. Git commit m, because we already added everything. We don't need am. And uh, this is uh, externalized. Skeleton CSS stuff in technical terms. Git push. It's all committed and now I have such a wonderfully small index.html that serves as my copy and paste uh, template for all pages moving forward where I can focus right in on the Title, meta description, author, hmm, author might go elsewhere. Uh, site verification is only home page that'll get deleted. A head, a head body and a header include a div that does styling, h1, h2, a paragraph for the YouTube include, uh, or iframe I should say, a footer, hmm, a closed div that goes with, where does that closed div go with? That goes with the 16 column stuff. That should not be beneath um, the, the footer. That should be above the footer. And now that makes me think I might have non-matched div issues again. That might have been the missing div from earlier. Again, I won't waste your time on it. Trust me, I'm going to make it perfect. Uh, I'll get rid of the extra line wrap here. Escape colon. There will have to be a new git commit, but not a big deal. Uh, this is so easy to look at and read. When you talk about clean code, this is what we're talking about. Now, uh, what am I doing? I'm just trying to get here so that I can backspace one, div h1. And then I'll tab here, and I'll tab here. This is just to make it, okay, and then escape, shift V, back pointy, and then dot to repeat that. And I'll worry about indenting later. I actually just want to make this as nice as possible to look at and waste a few more moments of your time. Whew, looking good. And on the final note, all these include files. Doesn't it take, make it take longer? No. These get pre-rendered as static files except in those cases where we override that behavior for custom Python code. So anyway, uh, thanks for joining me and I uh, hope to talk to you soon and please don't forget to subscribe and share this video. Thanks. Bye.